and welcome to How Do You Get Therapy for a Child with OCD, whether it be contamination OCD or any other subtype of OCD. Before actually going down the route of getting therapy, the first thing to actually identify is whether your child actually does have OCD. Now that might sound a bit obvious, when they think, well, I know my child's got OCD, but I think it's so easy to overlook what OCD actually stands for. I know when my child developed a contamination OCD, believe it or not, I didn't even research or look into what OCD actually consists of. And it's basically three different components. The first being obsessions. Obsessions are intrusive worrying thoughts that just keep going over and over in a child's head. You've got the C bit, which is compulsions, and they are actions that a child feels they need to do over and over again, whether they be physical or mental ones, in the hope that it sort of keeps them safe or keeps others safe or just reduces their anxiety. And then you've got the disorder bit then, and this is what determines it from being general anxiety, is that the thought becomes trapped and it goes round and round, almost like a hamster on a wheel, if you like, and the thought just won't release. So whereas children with ordinary and or general dis, uh, anxiety will be able to release the intrusive thought, because most children will get intrusive thoughts at some point, but most children will be able to carry on with a normal life. Sadly, for a child with contamination or other sites, uh, subtypes of OCD, they will not be able to release the thought and it will release, re it'll result in them carrying out the compulsions over and over and over again, which are exhausting mentally and physically. So, what are the signs that could indicate that your child is developing contamination or other subtypes of OCD? Um, well, in the case of, um, from having experience of contamination OCD, the things that I would say to look out for is if a child is doing, taking longer to do something, like getting changed, getting showered, getting ready, and um, they suddenly become late because this could indicate that they're doing so many compulsions that they uh, sort of go on later and later. They could cancel appointments at the last minute because they become so physically and mentally exhausted from carrying out these compulsions. Avoidance is another big clue where they avoid going out altogether because if you've got contamination OCD, sometimes it's easier to stay in your safe place, which very often is the home, rather than risk the fear of taking outside contamination back into your safe zone. Uh, losing a lot of school, lose, uh, school attendance, that can be a big sign. Uh, avoidance classrooms and people in school is another big sign. Um, avoiding bringing books home. That can be another big clue. Getting siblings to avoid classrooms and desks and to carry out rituals. Asking for constant reassurance, that's another big clue. If your child keeps asking, are you sure I didn't touch that, mum? Are you sure I won't develop this? Are you sure? Are you sure? Reassurance is a big clue. Having meltdowns over minor issues is another big clue. Uh, so there's just a few things to look out for. There could be an indication your, si your, do your child is developing um, some sort of OCD, whether it be contamination or germs or any other subtype of OCD. That's when you then need to be looking at therapy. Now, here in the UK, we're very fortunate in that we've got CAMS, which is a free organisation that will actually offer and provide free mental health uh, therapy for children with OCD and other mental health disorders. The sad thing is though, that there is a long waiting list for this therapy. So the first part of the process, if you need to get therapy for a, a child OCD, is you need to consult your GP because they will then be able to go over different things with you and identify whether your child needs to be referred to a specialist. If it is um, found to be that your child has got contamination or other types of OCD, you will then be put on the waiting list to see a specialist within CAMS. But as I said, that can be a lengthy process. The other option you've got is another option that we did, which would be to then to have a uh, pay for private therapy in the meantime. Now there's two downsides to this. Obviously there's the cost element. We were paying anything up from £45 to £85 an hour for therapy. We tried hypnotherapy, we tried CBT, you name it, we tried it. But what you need to be careful of with OCD is it is different to general anxiety. So you really do need to make sure that your therapist specialises in OCD and how to treat OCD in children. Um, and that is very important because sometimes Therapist, if you only go to a therapist that specialises in anxiety, then very often they won't know the, the correct procedures or the best, I should say, 
procedures to use when it comes to OCD because the, what the therapy you need when it comes to OCD is called exposure and response prevention, ERP for short. That is found to be the gold standard treatment for OCD. So you're going to need to look for a therapist. If you're going to go down the private route while you're waiting for therapy, you need to then be looking for a therapist that specialises in OCD and ERP therapy. The third option is and why I'm on you today is because I've been down both the other routes because CAMS are absolutely brilliant. I owe them so much for getting my daughter to be able to come out the other side from the controls of OCD. It was free therapy, but as I said, the downside of that was it was a lengthy process. I've also paid for therapy. As I said, I've paid for all sorts of therapy. It's costly and it doesn't always hit the nail on the head the way it needs to be hit. So that is why I decided to write books. I write children's books for children aged five to eight. They're called the Mind Monsters books. And they're simple little stories that help parents and children to help children speak up to intrusive thoughts. So that's the first product I offer. The second product I offer, which I'm really excited about as well, is that I've now um, come up with a, a, an OCD workshop. It's taken months of my life, but I, I was really passionate about creating a workshop to help parents support children with contamination and other types of OCD so that you don't have to make all the mistakes that I made by feeding OCD and making it a living nightmare for not just my child, but the whole family but also so that you can have hope and ha you know, have the faith that your child can free themselves from these demons of OCD. I mean, does it go completely? No. We thought my child was completely cured, but the minute anxiety creeps in, then OCD finds a way back in as well. But the good news is, once you know how to use exposure therapy, you will learn to nip it in the bud very quickly so it doesn't become a big problem. So I try to price my OCD workshops at a price that's affordable for parents because I know from experience, that, as I said, that private therapy can be very costly. So while you wait for therapy, because I do always advocate trying to get professional therapy as well from organisations like CAMS. But while you're waiting, my OCD workshop, in my opinion, obviously I'm a bit biased because I've created it. But I put a lot of hard work and love into this product to try and help as many other mums and dads from having to go through what I went by knowing the right ways to tackle OCD rather than the wrong ways. So my OCD workshop is priced at £45. And you can actually find details of my workshop on my website under the workshop category. And you can also find details of my Mind Monsters books as well. And with my Mind Monsters books, I actually donate half the profits from my books to CAMS as a way of giving something back. So if you want to check out my Mind Monsters children's books for five to eight year olds, or you want to put your trust in me and try out my workshops, please visit my website, which is www.themindmonsters.co.uk. And as I say, I'd love to, you know, try and help you on your journey to helping your child uh, with some therapy for OCD, contamination and other subtypes of OCD while you wait for professional therapy. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my channel and just like this video so I know I've been of some help. Thanks for watching, see you on the next video.